Welcome back guys. Or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous and that's the 2025 Toyota RAV4. But more specifically, this one is a hybrid in the XLE trim level and it's in a color that Toyota likes to call magnetic gray metallic, which actually does look really nice in person because there is a lot of metallic flake in the paint. But although this is the best selling crossover, especially out of any Japanese automaker, it's not perfect. So today I get to share the good the bad and the ugly to help you guys at home decide if the RAV4 might be the right vehicle for you or if you should leave it at the lot and look at the other crossover competition. So today you can expect to see a walk around, all the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 on GPS, and then my final thoughts and huge thanks to Twin Falls Subaru for letting me borrow the slightly used one for the day. I'll link them below if you're interested because they sell below MSRP and they ship all over the country. And with that said, let's dive right into this review. And if you like Toyota, the RAV4 or my video, please be so kind to consider liking my video. That really lets me know you want to watch more stuff like this. It helps the video is shared, but also helps you by having YouTube choose to show you more videos like this. Thank you so much. But if you're new to Toyota, or more specifically the RAV4, there's a few things that you should probably know. First of all, this nameplate came out back in 1994, but it wasn't until 1996 that the United States market actually got their first RAV4. There's now been five generations of them, with this being the fifth generation that came out back in 2019. So it's basically kind of long overdue for a refresh that's probably not going to come until the 2026 model year, or maybe even pushed out to 2027, just with how long Toyota sometimes holds the generations of their vehicles. But has it aged? I mean, not really. It's still pretty competitive with a lot of the other crossovers, and in fact, this did have a refresh just a few years ago. And it's still a top safety pick. It has a lot of standard safety features, especially when you go XLE trim level. But if you don't want that one and you want a lower trim level, or you don't even want a hybrid to begin with, you can buy a non-hybrid for as low as $29,000 before destination and delivery. The cheapest hybrid starts about $32,000. Or this XLE, it's really not very high at the list. So it starts about $34,000, but the way this one is spec, it's worth about $36,000. So there's basically one fairy price point, and if you really want to spend a lot of money, you can load one out to well over $40,000, or even go with the Hybrid Prime, which is not just a regular hybrid, but a plug-in hybrid, which adds another motor, adds quite a bit more horsepower, and quite a few other features, but that's not what this video today is about. One of the best things about compact crossovers is their size. They're not big and bloated, so they're going to fit really conveniently in most parking spots, in your garage and they just drive really well especially around town this one specifically is about 15 feet long the wheelbase is about 8.8 .8 feet so it actually is really planted and stable on the road especially where it's six feet wide and about five and a half feet tall this one with the hybrid system weighs around 3700 pounds but if you want a non-hybrid it's going to be a few hundred pounds lighter and likely a slightly bit less steady on the road because it's not as heavy and you do need to have some weight to your vehicles but it has about 8.4 inches of ground clearance, a 354 final drive ratio. It can tow about 3,500 pounds being the hybrid or about 1,500 pounds if you do opt to have a non-hybrid. The payload capacity is unfortunately only 900 pounds, which is not necessarily bad, but it's not class leading either. And then it can do a full circle in about 36 feet. The last few things to mention out here is the gas door is located on the driver's side, but whether you lock or unlock the vehicle, you're not going to have to worry about the bums trying to siphon any of your 14 and a half gallons of gas because there is a little gas lever on the inside by the driver footwell and this is rated for 41 in the city 38 on the highway it's less on the highway because of the extra wind and road resistance but seriously 14 and a half gallons times those figures and you're looking at almost 600 miles of max road trip and range which is pretty impressive Another thing I really like about this spec one, with only a 17 inch wheel, it has a 225, 65, 17 wheel, which I really like. That's a pretty common size and it's easy to find a lot of replacement options for that when that time comes. And then this is your key. You have lock, you have unlock, you have panic button, but leave this thing in your pocket or you can lock it and use your proximity key features right there to lock and unlock the vehicle. The driver's side door panel on this one has a lot of black materials, but Eh, yeah, they are kind of hard plastics. I guess you have a little bit of a relief on the elbow pad. The handle is nice. It's nice and meaty, nice and thick. The speaker's right there, bottle holder, some snacks. 
The snack pocket should be extended out further. Some of these materials, I think Toyota could do better. But for mid $30,000 ballpark, you're not necessarily paying for the interior. And then the door, it opens pretty wide, but you'll notice up here and on the back that the doors just don't open as wide as some other vehicles. But down here, there's nothing on the door sill. There are rubberized mats and pedals, and even the dead pedal. There's the gas door, the hood release, the OBD2 port, your options, some storage, ventilation, lighting stock, non-leather wrapped wheel. It's just like a plastic coating. And then this is your power adjusted seat, eight way in the front for the driver. And this one specifically is not heated. There's also not a sunroof up top. You're gonna have to pay a little bit more to get those features. But sitting inside here is actually really nice. Everything is very ergonomically well designed for probably the average sized human. I'm five foot 11 and it's easy to find a nice comfortable driving position. The hood does slope down a little bit. So you do have pretty good forward facing visibility. These windows are not the largest in the class, but they are big enough to do the job. You also have blind spot monitoring and really nice big side mirror, so you can really see a lot out there. But when we fire it up with the push button start, nothing really seems to happen. It's pretty quiet in here other than some dings and bells and whistles. And that's because we're in EV mode. You can see we have just a little bit of a battery charge right there. I have been kind of romping on it, especially for the zero to six DLC soon. But overall, you can go through the info display here I also have a bonus driving video of this where I launch out of some gravel and I actually show how the all-wheel drive system works and you can see the ball go to the back and I could feel it engage. So kind of interesting. It's not going to be as good as a lot of mechanical systems that are already engaged because the electric motor provides, in the back anyways, provides the all-wheel drive focused setup and that kind of is a reactionary system instead of preventative before you get into a sticky situation. But overall, pretty basic voice and volume adaptive cruise and all your extra safety settings right there. This is your setup, your display. It's not bad. It's not the best, but you know, for this price point, it's basically what you can expect. And then you have ventilation. You have physical climate controls. You have the traction control button. You have a wireless charger in some of these. You have a plug-in, a 12 volt. The backup camera is actually really nice on this one. Trajectory lines do move. You can hear the EV mode spaceship sounds engage, which I think are pretty cool. And you can be driving in just EV mode without the engine powered on. And then you have electronic parking brake, auto vehicle hold. You have trail mode, eco and sport, EV mode down here, some cup holders, and a pretty decent size center console that has a few plugins right there. Otherwise, you just have basic lighting and a sunglass holder up top. And then these kind of got cheaped out on. They just extend. It doesn't actually slide. And you also have an LED light, though, which tries to make up for it. And I think it does. Anyways, let's turn this off and we'll hop in the back. The back of the RAV4 is a really nice place to be. The door panel, though, like I mentioned, that's as wide as it opens, which is not class leading, but it's wide enough for most situations. Otherwise, the door panel basically follows all the same theme as the front. No one's really surprised that the same people who designed the front of the car designed the back, but that's actually not always the case. Sometimes the back really looks cheaped out on, and in this case, it's not. It's all the same quality materials. Still, there's nothing on the door sill. You have this nice all-weather mat that's across the whole thing. And again, this one has a couple thousand miles on it, but I don't think the back seats have ever been used. You also have a reclining seats, but they do make a lot of chatter, a lot of noise when you do try to move them around. They're not as smooth as some of the other vehicles. But sitting in the back, behind myself at 5'11", I have quite a bit of room in front of my knees. I have ventilation, some plugins. I have a pretty nice center armrest. And I actually have a surprisingly large amount of room above my head. There is a light right here with an LED sequence to turn it on. And overall, I can't complain too much, but with that said, let me hop out and I'll show you the hatch. I actually think the back of the RAV4 hybrid looks pretty good. It's a lot more boxy and bold than a lot of the other compact crossovers. And for that reason, I really like it. You can also really tell right here that it is just a little bit wider than it is tall by about that half foot, which just adds to stability. But overall, this one does not have a power lift gate. So you are gonna have to physically open it up. The shocks do a pretty good job. They seem to open it once it's about halfway up. And then back here, you have a massive 37 cubic feet of room. And overall, it actually looks like it's pretty functional space. There is a slant up here, but you can still fit a lot of width down below and a lot of depth to it too. And then when you drop the seats, you have about 69 cubic feet. 
So it is not class leading when the seats are down, but it actually is just about class leading when the seats are up. And then there's the handle on each side. I like this system because it can't really fail, but I've also never really heard of the power shocks failing either. And then you do have a full size spare tire underneath this all weather floor mat, and it's pretty easy to pull down. And if you're the lucky duck that gets to ride shotgun in the RAV4, you'll notice this magnetic gray metallic paint. It looks fantastic. This is actually the same paint that I ordered both my Tacomas with because I really like this color. Anyways, you have the proximity key features there to lock and unlock. And when you open it up, the door panel again opens to the same width, all the same materials, minus a little bit of the switch gear. You only have manual controls on this one, how it's spec. You have the cloth seats, which are actually really comfortable and they're bolstered well enough for most builds, I think. The backpack's having a good time. I do wish there was transmission tunnel storage on the side, but there is above the glove box storage, which is really nice. You also have a locking glove box with the key hidden in the remote. No plugins, but it's adequately sized. And with that said, let me come around to the front. I will pop the hood and I'll show you what the two and a half liter engine with the hybrid system looks like. Under the hood, you have the hybrid version of the A20A which is a two and a half liter naturally aspirated engine, which is actually transversely mounted because if you guys think about it, this engine only powers the front wheels because this hybrid has all the electronic components. It has an eCVT, which is not really supposed to be called a CVT because it's all planetary gears and it's basically nearly bulletproof from everything that I've seen and read up about them. And then the, the all wheel drive system is an e all wheel drive system because there's two electric motors one that helps the front wheels, one that helps the back, and it kicks in when it's time to turn on all-wheel drive as a reactionary system. So this engine, which makes around 200 horsepower on its own, it only powers the front wheels. You can see it has an engine mount right there. So the serpentine belt and the alternator, all that stuff is down here. You also have fuse boxes on the periphery. You have the battery, you have the air filter, some brake fluid, some more reservoirs, coolant, all that stuff. The induction side is on the front of the vehicle, the exhaust is on the back. Overall, I actually think there's a surprisingly decent amount of room to work on this, knowing how many systems are involved here. Tons of room on the back. And overall, I mean, this is about as bulletproof as any hybrid system gets. It's a Toyota after all. Didn't they pioneer this whole market? With that said though, let's drop the hood, take it for a drive. Zero to 60 in the RAV4 Hybrid. First of all, let's get up to the highway speed limit, full throttle. It's pretty cool having that little battery graphic telling you where the power is going. Overall though, this is actually a pretty nice ride. I'm not really surprised why, you know, about 400,000 people buy these every single year in the US. They feel good, everything's right where you want it to be within reach. Being about six feet wide, the passenger side isn't too far away, even in the six and a half of wide vehicles, like the Highlander, the Pilot, some of those bigger vehicles. It just feels way more spacious in here. But having what this is, technically a compact crossover, it actually feels really nice. It's a well-balanced vehicle for 15 feet long. It feels good, it feels stable on the road. It doesn't feel as stable as the longer vehicles or heavier vehicles, but it does change directions pretty well. It does seem to get up to speed and even slow down pretty well when I start to lightly get on the brake pedal. On the hybrids, having the eco charge and power display, it's kind of fun. There's not too much nose dive. I can hear some things sliding around in the back. Taking a corner, right back up to speed. Even with sport mode on, traction off, I haven't gotten the front wheels to chirp, so it seems to be doing pretty good. Unfortunately, the all-wheel drive system is only due to that electric motor in the back, so the back's not gonna feel as planted and as predictable as some other all-wheel drive vehicles that are more mechanical in nature. And it's extremely windy out, and I can tell there's a lot of wind noise on the glass, but I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it's not gonna be as insulated as some other vehicles that are higher end, higher class, more than, you know, mid $30,000 ballpark. But I don't think it's bad at all. And then these factory all season tires, they don't seem to be kicking up too many rocks, but there is gonna be a little bit of a bump right here. Let's see how it manages at 53 miles an hour. Yep, the sidewall on these 65 tires seems to do pretty good. And overall, I like driving this, I like riding in it. It's not as sporty as a Mazda, it's not as off-road focused as a Subaru, but it's reliable. And it's one of the last really reliable Toyotas. And there's a lot of reasons to, to love one of these. A lot of reasons why I recommend you guys go out and test drive one of these. With how many of these are produced, it shouldn't be too hard to find one. But anyways, let me go find that private road and we'll do a zero to 60.
Zero to 60 in GPS. We are in sport mode. Traction is off, even though it doesn't show the light on the dashboard. I'm gonna do a brake rev if it'll let me. Okay, it will. And density altitude's 3,600 feet, so we're down on power by 10%. True zero to 60 came in at 7.63 seconds or a little bit faster if you discredit rollout. My final thoughts of the RAV4 hybrid in this XLE trim level is personally, I actually really like it. I think Toyota has done a really good job manufacturing these vehicles. I'm not surprised why they sell over 400,000 a year and why there's basically a million sold every single year in the United States. They do really well, they perform really well. They're not necessarily the best in any one category, but they are overall kind of a jack of all trades with the combination of old school Toyota reliability. We don't know what the next generation RAV4 is gonna be. If it's gonna be a less reliable powertrain, a turbo engine, you know, we know how the Tacomas and the Tundras have been. So personally, I would be a-okay if Toyota decides to continue to sell this one for a few more years. In fact, you know, I almost wanna buy one after driving it for this review because it is such a nice vehicle. It does seem to do such a good job and it just feels like it's gonna last the test of time and it's gonna be durable. Heck, these have been out for basically six or seven years now and there's very few that have had problems, specifically the hybrid ones actually, if you guys can believe that. Anyways though, ultimately my thoughts and opinions are just my own and I wanna hear yours in the comments below. So please comment down below, like this video if you got anything out of it, subscribe if you haven't already and if you appreciate a car review on a very cold, windy day where the sun is going down and it's probably not even four o'clock, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I wish you guys the best. Hope you take care. See ya.